African leaders are gathering in Ethiopia's capital for the final day of the African Union summit. Talks are expected to focus on trade, humanitarian issues and violence in Democratic Republic of Congo and the Sahel region. Speaking at the summit on Saturday, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres announced $250 million to fund crisis-hit areas. Around the world today, 339 million people are in need of humanitarian aid an increase of more than 25% since last year. And so today, here in Addis, I'm announcing the largest ever allocation from our United Nations Central Emergency Response Fund, $250 million, to combat famine and to address unfunded emergencies. Well, for more on this, we're joined live by Malcolm Webb from the Ethiopian capital, who's covering the uh, summit for us. Malcolm, uh, $250 million sounds like a great deal of money, but of course there must be questions about whether it's going to be enough. Well, one of the worst crises affecting the continent, but particularly this region at the moment, is the drought. Uh, four, or in some places, five rainy seasons have been missed. It's the worst drought in decades, affecting more than 30 million people across East Africa and the Horn of Africa, and most of them are here uh, in Ethiopia. In neighboring Somalia, three decades of conflict destroyed the once effective irrigation infrastructure system. Now, one institution that's been investing in infrastructure across the continent for about six decades is the African Development Bank. Now, it was in the 1960s that the Organization of African Unity, the predecessor of the African Union, that's where we are now, founded the bank with a mandate to invest uh, in development programs across the continent and to draw capital from across the world. And historically, it's invested a lot in infrastructure. Now, with me is its president, Akiwumi Ayasino. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Michael. So I understand there's been a change of plan, and now you're looking at agriculture. What is the plan? Well, first and foremost, it's very important for Africa to feed itself. And secondly, because Africa sits on 65% of all the uncultivated arable land left to feed the world, you know, it's important that Africa unlocks that potential. And that's why in the last, um, you know, seven years that I've been president of the bank, we've invested well over $12 billion in agriculture, increasing productivity of agriculture, making sure you can have irrigation, a lot more infrastructure, and supporting farmers and banks to be able to lend more to agriculture. So um, I was just listening to you as we were doing the intro. As you know, we have droughts being a major issue now. Um, one of the things the bank has actually done is to uh, help to support the development of um, technologies that can actually res resist uh, uh, heat, for example. And you cited this country, Ethiopia, as a, as a success story. Why absolutely, is that? absolutely. You know, we provided Ethiopia with huge amount of seeds of wheat, but they are heat tolerant wheat varieties. So it allowed it to be able to raise the area cultivated on that is heat tolerant wheat varieties from only 5,000 hectares in 2018 to over 1.4 million hectares today. And the Prime Minister of Ethiopia has now made uh, launch a program to make Ethiopia a net exporter of wheat. In a Ethiopia very short may period. be exporting wheat, but as the UN says, there are more than 10 million people here who are food insecure. So something's not working. Well, actually, it is working. What you have is that you will always have need for humanitarian assistance. As you know, they are just coming out of conflict in which in the Tigray area, they have a lot of people that need to continue to have that. So there's no doubt about the humanitarian one. But structurally, this is a tremendous success for Africa. We've done that also in Sudan. Sudan caught its wheat import down by 50 percent in just three years. And when... But, the... but across the region, we're talking about communities of, yes. of tens of millions of people who've survived in, uh, in the same way for, for millennia, uh, many of them herders, and, and that way of life's been destroyed by climate change. But these people are too poor to afford to buy the food that's in the market, uh, and many of them can't be reached because of conflicts which still aren't resolved. So investment in stable arable areas still doesn't help them, does it? Well, it does, because, you know, I don't think the future of Africa lies in begging for food. The future lies in actually putting the seed in the ground for these farmers to produce their food. But, you know, the old issue of climate change is also very important. Africa loses today 7 to $15 billion a year because of climate change.
from droughts to floods and, and, and also uh, low-cost swamps that you also have already covered. And so as African Development Bank, we are very active in this. We've launched what is called the African Adaptation Acceleration Program, which is with the Global Center on Adaptation, which is a $25 billion program to support African countries to be able to adapt to climate change. It is the largest such effort globally to be able to do this. So we've also helped these countries to have what we call disaster risk insurance programs for the farmers and the hardest to be able to insure themselves against many of these catastrophic uh, weather-related risk events. Thank you very much, Akiwumi Ayeshino, apologies, Ayeshino, who's the president of the African Development Bank here at the African Union in Addis Ababa. Back to you in Doha. Malcolm, thank you very much. Malcolm Webb in the Ethiopian capital there.